we all bought into this lie that you've got to feel ready in order to change. Yeah. We bought into this, this complete falsehood that at some point you're going to have the courage. At some point you're going to have the confidence. Um, it's, it's complete garbage. And so there are so many people in the world and, and, and you know, you may be watching this right now and you have these incredible ideas and what you think is missing is motivation. And that's not true because the way that our minds are wired and the fact about human beings is that we are not designed to do things that are uncomfortable or scary or difficult. Our brains are designed to protect us from those things because our brains are trying to keep us alive. And in order to change, in order to build a business, in order to be the best parent, the best spouse, to do all those things that you know you wanna do with your life, with your work, with your dreams, you're gonna have to do things that are difficult, uncertain, or scary, which sets up this problem for all of us. You're never gonna feel like it. There's a five second window between the moment that your inner wisdom, your instincts, your second brain, your gut, whatever you want to call it, all of that unique power that's in you that comes from your DNA, that comes from your life experiences, that comes from you know everything that you've learned in your life, situational intelligence, all of that, when it speaks to you and tells you to move, to speak, to take some form of action, you only got five seconds to move before your mind will talk you out of it. Your mind is designed to do three things. Your mind by design does just three things. It basically regulates your body to keep you alive. It also, uh, when you're sleeping, half of your mind shuts down and the other half catalogs everything that happened to you today so you can have memories. And the third thing that your mind does is it protects your ass. And the main way that it does that is it, it does that by magnifying risk. Magnifies any situation or any conversation. Most of us know what we could do to change things for the better. And we spend our time and our energy talking ourselves out of doing those things. And the other thing that I convince people of, because this is so true, it's the littlest stuff. The little things make all the difference. And what I know is that true change comes down to five second windows. That moment that you know you need to do something that feels slightly uncomfortable, and your resignation, your excuses, your self-doubt start cranking up in your head, you gotta move. You have to move. And so what happened for me is I invented a hack, a brain hack. It's the stupidest thing in the world. And it turns out that it's actually tremendously profound and powerful at a neurological level and at a scientific and a psychological level. When I invented it, I had no clue what I had invented. Here's how it goes. The alarm rings in the morning. Most of us don't want to get out of bed, right? But we know we should. So I would go five, four, three, two, one. The moment the alarm rang, five, four, three, two, one, just like NASA, what they do, they count down to launch a rocket ship. And the counting backwards kind of shut my mind off. And then suddenly at one, I would stand up. And I would use this every single morning to get out of bed. And nine years later, I still use it every single morning to get out of bed. And I noticed two things um, as I started to use it. I noticed that that window where I'd be lying in bed and I'd have the knowledge that I should get up, but in my body, I wouldn't feel it. And as I lied in bed, and you can try this tomorrow morning, set your alarm early, earlier than you normally do, and watch what happens. The alarm will go off and your mind knows that you said you would get up. Your mind has that wisdom. Your gut has that wisdom. It's, it's holding on to it. And then it starts to kind of nudge you with a little guilt. And then what'll happen is all of a sudden you'll start talking yourself out of doing the, the thing you said you would do. Why is it so hard to do the little things that would improve my life? The way that our minds are designed is our minds are designed to stop you at all costs from doing anything that might hurt you. And the way that, 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 that this all happens is it all starts with something super subtle that none of us ever catch. And that is with this habit that all of us have that nobody's talking about. We all have a habit of hesitating. We have an idea, you're sitting in a meeting, you have this incredible idea, and instead of just, you know, saying it, you stop and you hesitate. Now what none of us realize is that when you hesitate, just that moment, that micro moment, 
that small hesitation, it sends a stress signal to your brain. It wakes your brain up and your brain all of a sudden goes, oh, oh wait a minute, why, wait, why is he hesitating? He didn't hesitate when he put on his killer spiky sneakers. He didn't hesitate with the uh, really cool track pants. He didn't hesitate with the NASA t-shirt. Now he's hesitating to talk, something must be up. What, what I know is that those are two different parts of your brain going. At, at, at once, and if you go five, four, three, two, one, you interrupt the habit of self-doubt and the habit of talking yourself out of it and shutting down the part of the brain that actually minimizes your power, and you awaken the part of the brain that is active in functional MRIs when you're trying to change. And so all you need to know to change anything is, A, you're never gonna feel like it. You're never gonna feel ready to start that business. You're never gonna feel ready to have that hard conversation. You're never gonna feel like getting out of bed. You're never gonna feel like it's a good idea to apply for that promotion. We're designed to stay comfortable and safe. So if you know that you're A, never gonna feel like it, and B, that no one's coming, it's up to you. You're not a kid anymore. I'm dead serious about this. Yeah. Like most, a lot, so many of you are waiting to be picked. By who? Are you making the most of your life? Yeah. And the answer is yes, if you pay attention to what you do in five second windows, are you the kind of person that when your instincts come alive and they wanna nudge you to go talk to that cute gal across the way or raise your hand in a meeting and share that idea? Are you the kind of person that pushes yourself to step into that or do you pull back? That's the power of a five second decision because you can't, you can't choose how you feel. You can't. You can actually disregard your feelings. You can become the kind of person that is so in tune with the values that you have and what you actually want, that when feelings rise up, you can choose to act however you want, despite them. Even if you're tired, you can still go to the gym. Even if you're annoyed with your spouse, you can still speak in a manner that's loving. Even if you don't feel like doing that hard work, you can still push yourself to do it. Your feelings aren't a choice. Your behavior and your thoughts are always a choice. I think you should chase what energizes you. Everyone okay. talks about passion, legacy, purpose. Yeah, blah, 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 yeah. blah, 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 blah. The one word to pay attention to is energy. I love that. That's it. Let's simplify this. Okay. So whatever energizes you, mm. naturally expands you, feels like possibility, is exciting to do. It may be scary. That doesn't matter. It has to do with how it makes you feel. Right. When you were in your 20s, money made you feel good. It expanded you, it energized you. Chasing the money, that was the game. That was your passion, that was your per There's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. And I particularly wanna say that to the women that are watching. Yeah, hell yeah. Because it is socialized into women not to chase success like that, not to go after the money. And so if what energizes you is amassing wealth, go for it. People talk about the word passion yeah. or purpose. Right. And the truth is, it's not a person, place, or a thing. It's not. It is the feeling of being expanded and energized. Right. I if you're that. pursuing your passion, it means that you wake up every day and are energized. Mm -hmm. So instead of trying to think, what's my purpose? What's my passion? What's my purpose? What's my passion? I don't know. Yeah. Instead of thinking like that, I want you instead to ask yourself, what's, what could I do today that would energize me? What energizes me? If it's making money, figure out how to make money. Right. If it is making a difference, figure out how to make a difference. It could be in any single shape or form, but if it energizes you, that's what you need to follow.